So Juliana, we're so excited that you're going to, that you're here with us today and that you've chosen to be part of We Choose to Thrive. We Choose to Thrive is our way that now we have almost 50 women that have within the series of two books that have stood up to say their to share their stories, not to say poor me, but to say I choose to make a difference. I choose to thrive. I choose to be happy. And this is what I've done. This is my story. This is what I've done. Our stories are very important. And there's a purpose for writing and doing what we are doing is to give, offer hope and encouragement and enlightenment to those that, that are hearing this for the very first time and not realizing maybe prior to this that there was a choice. So welcome to We Choose to Thrive. And I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for having me. So, Juliana, tell us a little bit of a story about what what your story of the past was, and what caused you to make make a change um, from the that story. How did you get to where you are today? What caused me to make light of my story is because I didn't want to see the same type of people going through the same thing, or anyone for that matter, going through the same thing as me, because I feel like especially when people have gone through something, they've gone through it and they have that wisdom of how they got through it, so why not help someone else who's going through the same thing? Um, with my story personally, it started over a period of years, and I experienced emotional, mental, and financial manipulation while living at home with my mom and my sister, and at the time, it was the only family that lived with me in that state, so I couldn't reach out to other family members. So I had to really, you know, find it in myself, find it in friends, and find other places where I could really begin to change and see that change. Um, and then also going through a divorce at a young age also took its effect on me with my parent relationship. I was treated, the way I was treated from both my sister and my mom got worse as time went on and as I got older. The physical abuse came later on, um, on May 5th, 2017. And the best way I could describe that is it was pretty much just overdue, a blow up of events that was just results from a, a toxic environment for me. And it was just to the fact where I didn't enjoy going home, I didn't enjoy the people I was around, and I could tell that my mental headspace was ready for a new leaf. <laughs> so what, what happened that, that really triggered you knowing that there had to be something different? There was abusive time. Um, you made a decision at that point. What really triggered it was a number of things and being aware of what I didn't want in my life. So constantly being around negative and toxic people, whether it was family members, friends, or, you know, kind of energy drainers, you know, because your, your body and your mind kind of can tell if you don't want to be by someone or that kind of thing. But it was to the point where it was stronger than that. It was like, okay, I see what's going on in my family. I see the lives they're living and, you know, really putting myself in certain circles and areas where I had people who were really growing and striving for better success in their life, I was like, you know what, I'm going to put myself in that circle. I'm going to insert myself to where I want to be like them and I want to be around them. Instead of being over here with people who aren't going to help me grow, who aren't going to push me forward and who aren't positive. Very good. Well, at a young age, you learned something that perhaps many, many people don't learn until they're much older. So kudos to you for having you. the wisdom to understand that, that you, you. you become who you associate with, who, who you spend the most of your time with. Most. And this is beautiful. So you made your change, and in making the change, you had some pretty tough times because you were suddenly on your own? Yes, yes, most definitely. It, um, you know, none of it was easy, to be honest with you. Um, you know, and there were some, there were some gruesome parts of my days, let me tell you, you know, I, <laughs> it was, you know, waking up early, and I was, you know, sleeping on my neighbor's couch, and I had, you know, two jobs and no car, and 
I, you know, change zip codes really quick and from living in a normal-ish part of town to going to a bad part of town and, you know, having to kind of, you know, live over there and go to work. So it was definitely, you know, hardworking, living with, you know, humble people who are trying to help me. I just had to kind of like hustle and grind through it. And I still had, you know, my personal development and I still was moving forward, you know, and I just have to laugh at it now. But I don't know if this is too much, but there was definitely a time when I was um, sleeping in my neighbor's garage, a really, really good friend of mine. And I had gotten bed bugs oh. from, yeah, I had gotten bed bugs um, from the people that I was staying with in kind of the rough part of town, temporarily. And I was unaware, of course, and so I ended up getting them, and I was um, sleeping in her garage in the dark on a duct tape mattress. And it was so funny because I don't know what caused me to reach for my phone, but I reached for my phone. I, you know, Googled or looked up on SoundCloud personal development, and I listened to that in the dark in the garage for like two hours <laughs> going through all that. So it was just one of those, you know, times when you're like, wow, a year ago, I wouldn't have done that. Or, you know, you, you're like, you kind of step outside for yourself for a moment. You're like, wow, I, I can't believe, you know, right then and there, I could have just, you know, went to sleep crying or I could have just had a pity party. But instead, I chose to do this. So now the only thing I can do is laugh from that memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. those are the, that shape the character. But what I see from our conversation is a leader has been born, or maybe the leader was always there, but now the leader is stretching. And at a young age that you've been able to, to come to the realization, not only that you become those who you associate with, but that you're tapping into the vastness of amazing material there is for us to tap into just by going to YouTube, just by doing a research on Google, you can find a, a storehouse of amazing things that, that will empower you and enlighten you to keep, to keep moving ahead. And you are already tapping into that. Wonderful. And I also know some of your friends, you know, that, that you're, um, that you've chosen to, to, to spend your time with and, I, what, what beautiful choices that you have made to make a difference. So if somebody, Juliana, if somebody was just starting down this road, just, just like in the same path that you were, where they've experienced some, some a story, a history of abuse, but then it came down to that moment where they know they have to make a change, what would you say to them? I would say that healthy advice will hurt at first, and what you may not want to hear or accept, you know, very well might be exactly what you need to hear or face about a fear, and whether it be in that moment or in that day, the people who care about you, whether it be your inner circle, friends at work, or a neighbor, you know, what they're telling you about your healing journey, just take it in. Just kind of soak everything up from the different people that are telling you because not only are they at, are they at different points in their life, so they have different wisdom and opinions for you, but it's just great in general to be open-minded, especially when you're almost like a fresh wound. So you kind of want to be that sponge and be, okay, you know what, mate, you're right. That sounds, you know, maybe I need to let them in one day or maybe I need to work on forgiving or maybe I need to work on self-awareness. So definitely being open. And the hardest one for me, especially at first, was to definitely picture yourself happy again. Whether it's, you know, a dream board or looking at old pictures or, just having, you know, a day and going out with friends, making the, that time is really important because, you know, I thought that I would never laugh again and I thought that I would never smile or be happy about certain things. And your brain is really good at grabbing onto a negative thought and keep planting it there. But the yes. main thing is, you know, kind of kicking it out. 
kind of noticing that you're thinking it and being like, no, I know how to fix it because I'm my solution and my problem, so we're going to kick it out. You know, even though your insides are going to feel major pain, don't put a limit on when your happiness can happen again because um, some of your best memories are going to be the ones that aren't planned. And, you know, allow yourself the freedom to create a new you, whether it be daily disciplines, mantras, for you, to you, and by you. Very good. So you're, the growth that you're making, I know that you mentioned in a previous conversation that, that you've also tapped into Toastmasters. You've tapped into a lot of other resources. Tell us a little bit about that. So, you know, another thing is, is with me, I love, I, you know, I, I, being open again is really important. I love meeting new people, new cultures, and I really let it all in. And when I recently met two gals at a potluck from Toastmasters, I had heard about it. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I automatically was like, oh, it's to make yourself better. It's to do this. I was like, okay, let's do it. I automatically was like, okay, I want to learn and I want to get better at that because if you think about it, communication is ta and talking is universal. It's going to be daily. And so, you know, the interaction, although we have a lot of technology nowadays, this will always be the most important thing. You know, giving someone your time is really valuable and showing honestly how much you care and respect because if you reciprocate it and if you – you know, work on yourself in that area, communication, speaking, and even self-talk, it's really going to pay off. You're beautiful. The, the, you. the beauty of this is that you have chosen to thrive. You have chosen to do well. And so your message to, you know, for me, it took me till I was 60 years old before I could even speak what happened to me. And my, my abuse came, it was pretty drastic abuse as a very young child, but because I didn't have any um, parameters around me as far as a good idea of what a healthy re um, family was like, what a good relationship with father, mother, siblings, and all of that was like, sometimes we go into adulthood um, attracting the very same things because we don't have that something to go by it's something to really guide us the right way yet right. deep inside we know there's something better right and even though I lived you know after the first initial as a young adult making some big big mistakes attracting the wrong thing making at a, even at a very young age making the choices to live differently and to tap into the things that could help me most people didn't know what the story was and I had struggles with depression and different things like that because some of the stories there's a, a lot of story behind it but actually speaking up and being here like this has been one of the biggest when I wrote my book and shared my story in my book the woman I love changed everything because all of a sudden I, I tapped into that courage I let it out I released it to the world and then I was able to keep move forward and find the healing that I needed to not be living a life looking back at what happened, you know, yeah. moving forward. And as a young person, I, might, I have to say kudos to you for the wisdom that you have. You are a leader. You are a leader. You know, it hasn't been easy. I'm not going to lie. None no. of it has been easy. No. no. But you've made some choices. You make in your you're surrounding yourself with really good people and good resources to tap into. So I so appreciate you taking this time to be a part of our We Choose to Thrive. And we will, you know, we will be publishing what probably a, about a month now. And I'm so delighted that you have chosen to share your story. Thank of you. Of course. Of course. Thank you.